La 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 la. Internet, are you going to fuck me? No, I think we're good. All right. Sure. <laughs> that, might the, that might be the YouTube intro. Now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am The League Dad, and I am joined by the gang, the squad, the... Banditos, goons. I don't <laughs> the goons. I, I'm, <laughs> the like goons. I did this last time. I was trying to come up with a cool name for us, but <laughs> you know what it is. The, the boys are back in town. We got Kevin Mitchell and Alistair, as always. Uh, you know, just holding it down, well, guys. I'm so happy. This is my favorite, my favorite night as always because we get to talk about league. Uh, but I want to find out how you guys are doing. Let let everybody know how Kevin Mitchell and Alistair are doing because I want to know myself. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing great. Great weekend. Uh, had an interview last week, and I'm hearing the results of it tomorrow. I did get an offer. I just don't know what's in the offer yet, which Ooh. is the hearing the results of it thing. So hopefully it's a good offer. <laughs> That's hopefully, exciting, yeah. man. Uh, yeah. did, it, are you allowed to say what it is you're applying for, or did we keep that on the hush? Oh, I can I can say. It's oh, a okay. video game company called Phoenix Labs. It was founded nice. by rioters. And they made a game called Dauntless. It's the only game I think some people might have heard of. Um, mm. Besides that, they're publishing a mobile game called Free Fire from Garena, which is like that uh, org that does oh, the Garena. GPL slash the Southeast Asia League of Legends is owned by Garena. Oh. Maybe not the best reputation, but, you know, they have money. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, if you're looking for a job, too, I just recently saw that uh, Mr. Beast, uh, that YouTuber, is hiring and i was like i just that for fun YouTuber, he's yeah, kind yeah, of a big you know, deal you know that big youtuber guy you know you may have heard of him uh also interested in league of legends but yeah like apparently he made a video saying that he's hiring because he, he passed like 100 million subs or something like that as for wow. fun was looking at because he lives in in my state in north carolina greenville is literally like an hour from me uh so i was like oh, hey, let me look I, at some of these I, I just assume all the big youtubers live in la or something no he he's actually from raleigh which is like 40 minutes from where i am and then right now he lives in greenville which is funny because it's literally in the middle of nowhere but for what he does he needs a lot of space you know what i mean so it's kind of a yeah. a good spot but anyways mm, hey anybody looking for jobs some of them are remote locations mr beast wait Maybe. are you moving out of sf kevin uh no not yet they don't have an oh. office built oh. yet. so oh, for now okay. i'm just going to be remote probably not an sf forever because you know rent is insane here so if i'm not right. if i'm working remote i can work anywhere anywhere um, come to seattle Ooh. i actually it's was thinking cheaper. about it because it's it's not that hot there right i don't like hot. yeah and so it's... la eventually i'll have to go but yeah yeah la is definitely way hotter but it's like it's been pretty warm this summer um mm -hmm. but it definitely cools down during other times yeah. Nice. It's definitely That's on cool. my list, though. So exciting, cool. man! Need to find a new place in, in about five months. <laughs> nice, Alistair. How are you? For you guys that don't know, offline, we've had to reschedule and postpone this podcast because <laughs> Alistair, in his new building, has building meetings every freaking night, and so we're like, and you know, after it gets a certain time, like it's too late for me because I am the old one here, and like freaking my body just doesn't last. But anyways, Alistair, he just fresh from a meeting. How are you doing, my friend? Oh, I'm tired. First week, uh, first week of school, so nice. lots of meetings, all of them pointless but <laughs> mandatory. So, yep. other than that, it's been pretty easy. So, kind of oh, chilling. Nice. I like nice. it. Hey, are you? So you posted when tickets are gone, and I think what is it? The semifinals of Worlds is in Georgia. Is that correct? Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta, Georgia. Yep. So. Hey man, if you're serious, I'm trying to I'm trying to get some tickets. I got I got. No, I, I'm going 100. percent Oh, you're going 100. percent All right, well, yeah. I'm gonna really try 100%. to get those tickets because yeah. I'm free and like I I want to try to go. It's not that far from me, so that's cool, man. I have to to see if I can get one. What about you, Mitchell? How's how's life in Seattle? Yo, speaking of, I'm trying to 100. percent I don't know if I can get tickets, but go to the finals in San Francisco. Dude, um, that would be that's, awesome. That's where I'm definitely trying to go. I'm getting a bunch of my friends to come. I have a lot of just people. I mean, I, I grew up in San Francisco, so it's mm, on a good. If I awesome. can get tickets, it's going to be legendary to have the finals in where I grew up. So that would be sick. Um, otherwise, I mean, Seattle's been nice, it's been warm, but not too hot. Um, on Sunday, I was actually with Kevin and Alistair watching the games in Discord, nice. and I had to leave. And I was like, "Oh, CLG is getting dumpstered game one. All right, I can. I'm just gonna go hang out with my friends." <laughs> I come back, 
And I look and I'm like, oh, the game's still going. What the hell? So that was uh, that was crazy to to have that happen this this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the CLG C9. I was saying this in Discord. Was like. That wasn't peak League of Legends, but man, was it entertaining. That thing was so fun to watch. Like, honestly, the games were so long. Like, every game was so long. I was like, man, this is... I People missing stuff, like mechanics all over the place, bad yeah. decisions, throwing back and forth. But what a banger. And, like, I want to jump to that series first just because, like... You know, it was really exciting to watch, d d regardless of who you're for. Because, honestly, I think... I didn't expect CLG to really put up a fight. Honestly, in my head, I thought C9 was going to run with it. But after a while, I kind of was rooting for CLG. But what did you guys that's think? Where, that's right? where you went wrong, man. We I all know. started rooting for CLG <laughs> in our heads, and then they freaking lost game five with such a good that's draft. That's the problem. Oh, my God. We, we cursed it. I cursed it, too. I saw it was 2-2. Two, two. I was like, oh, I hope they win. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's like it's like they are um, so fun to watch, even though they literally only have one button and that's go like contracts just does not know how to like not go in. And uh, I like it, honestly, like even even Dokla has that same kind of attitude. Like, I feel like Dokla is not yeah. the best, but that energy of like. YOLO, we're just going to go for it. You know what I'm saying? Like what balls to go game four? They go Akali and Yone like that's. Yeah. That's pretty ballsy because a lot of times, you know, I'll watch in other, you know, regions, well, and anywhere, really, game five or uh, like a high pressure game, they're not, they're trying to get a W, so they're going to pick the easiest e to execute comp, like nothing crazy, nothing hard to execute and pull off, and they pulled off those two assassins, like Dokla and Akali, like pretty spicy, man, but yeah, I like that, I like where CLG is going, uh, but yeah, what, what other thoughts did you guys have on that game? I thought that that game was a banger as well. I had a lot of fun just watching. It was extremely entertaining between games. I mean, sure, quality is whatever. But if you really watch other leagues, like there were some atrocities being committed by KT, True. Uh, some of the LPL teams. Like, it, guys, league has it's been like this for a couple of years now. Like, it's just the highest level of league is not always beautiful and orchestrated. It's like a little messy, a little calculated, and anything can happen. Well, generally, other than NA winning. So, like, I <laughs> damn I think, Kevin crushing our hopes right there. I'm hey, just I mean, saying. if CLG makes it to Worlds, I'll change my mind. You know, but uh, okay. no, no. I, I I think it was super entertaining. Um, it was really interesting that Zeri got through four times, and like I was like, oh wow. I don't think that Zeri is weak. I think Luger played a terrible series. Yeah, I actually think that even though they won two out of the the five or two out of the yeah two out of the five, I think they should have won like four. Like, I, I really think some of those games were just CLG's to win, and uh, they just lost it. Like, I thought their drafting was good, so CLG coaching, great. Mm -hmm. I thought their team play was messy, but I thought Luger, who was one of their best players in terms of carries, just did not show up this series. So, I think it's good news for them in the lower bracket. They'll beat whoever comes their way, and then if they rematch C9, I think C9's in trouble. Oh, I like that. I, I think mm. CLG wins game five if Luger doesn't decide to play Disco Zeri. I'm gonna be honest. You know? yeah. If if he went flash cleanse, I'm pretty sure they win that game. Mm. Yeah, that's I I, I, I see I, that. I have to agree. I I think if he even went ghost flash, he, like it's the only yeah. uh, CC he's missing is um or that he's playing against was Sejuani and Polly. and that and Polly and then maybe LeBlanc root right. But you should never get hit by those if you're playing Zeri, especially with Karma and Ghost. Like all you do is change your positioning up a little bit like the normal way mm -hmm. <laughs> you play adc and you don't have to run ghost cleanse it was some people were saying it's a misclick i have no idea if it was like a mistake or not there's i haven't heard any news saying that it was intentional or non-intentional we'll go with it's intentional that he would decide to go ghost cleanse and i 100 percent agree it was troll <laughs> yeah. i also think that yeah i i have to agree with kevin's sort of analysis that like it was luger's games to lose when he had such a good like situations for him um i i do think that game three and game five they were in positions to win and their draft was better and it really felt like they yeah they threw it away themselves so um it it was it was a really fun series um but a lot a lot of mistakes to to talk about uh, and go through yeah what do you guys think about the vex pick um by palafox first of all i there were moments where palafox like his silas he missed a lot of stuff uh he had some yeah, some zonkers <laughs> but but i did want to because the the pick was leblanc 
uh, and he had counter pick. And I think analysts were thinking maybe Lissandra. I actually was thinking Lissandra. I thought that would have been a good counter pick into there. I just, for me, it didn't feel, it felt like the Vex was super underwhelming. Uh, I don't know. What, let me get your thoughts on that because that's that, that was my opinion on that. I mean, my opinion of Vex has always been pretty high. I think it's a big pick in LPL at, mm. at times, depending on the meta. I don't think it's much right now. But like, Shahu has been good on it. I think Knight has played it a few times before MSI. Um, they buffed uh, Vex on 12-13 to give her 10% more AP ratio on her Q, I believe is miserable, and then lower the cooldown of it at, by one second at every level. Like, it's it's a decent character, I think. I just don't think he played it that well. Mm, uh, he played okay. it fine. He knew how to wave clear. Like, it looked like he had put some practice tool time in, but it didn't have the idea of how to play together with it as a team. So, I wouldn't, I'm not anti Vex in terms of team comps. I think that it, you definitely could see the theory. It's kind of like Lissandra, where LeBlanc doesn't really want to go in yeah. against it, and she has to, like, be really careful, maybe build a Banshees later, right? Not anything the Blancs want to do during the durability patch. So, I thought the pick was fine. I thought the play wasn't even that bad, really. Like, I thought it was okay. He just couldn't carry past Luger's Ghost. Like, I mm -hmm. I don't even think Ghost Zeri is an instant loss, but the way he was playing is he thought he had Flash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he thought he had Flash. Mm -hmm. That's, That's true. true yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely a Vex supporter personally, and it is definitely a good lane, but I don't like it in this particular game because really the only value you're getting is the lane counter against the Blanc. Yeah. I because yeah. like realistically, you're not gonna get much value against the Blanc uh, in late game because the way you play LeBlanc in pro is not the way you play it in solo queue. In pro play, you're just popping out a vision, QR, mm -hmm. and then jumping back and then maybe throwing your E if you have time. Like that that's all you're doing. You're not using your W for damage. Yeah. So and that that's why Vex is good against LeBlanc because LeBlanc can never go on Vex because she just hits W and fears her, yeah. right? If and really, like, what's the only dash dashes that oh, they have Sedge Q? Oh no, Sedgewani got feared. Anyways, uh, there's I guess Viego ult, which is unstoppable, and then there's Jensen's W. I mean, I guess there's may, maybe if the Blabber takes Gwen, there's another dash, but it's just like it doesn't really make like have enough value, and F Palfox can't really dive as well as you would want to, right. especially against. Siver, Lulu, Sejuani, Viego, it kind of just doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't even work with their comp, I don't think, that well. I feel like if you want to play a champion like that, you'd be better off just playing, like, Talia. Yeah, I, I think... I, I actually don't think the champ's that great right now, in pro at least. Because um, it, it is... You get the most value out of Vex when you can reset with your ulti a lot. Yes. And mm -hmm. it's really hard when it's an enchanter meta, unless you go directly onto the enchanter, you're, they're constantly getting shielded, and she just doesn't have enough burst to like reset and kill people in a single rotation. And then the meta isn't very dive heavy; it's much more skirmish heavy and team fight heavy. So I, I don't think she fits in right now. I think durability patch really hurt her a lot. That you can't burst people, and I just think they're also better champions in the meta too. So I think like in this situation, yeah, Lissandra would have been fine. But even though it's a losing matchup to LeBlanc, it's you go down 20 CS and you outscale. You can play Ari. I think Ari is just a much better champion in this yeah. situation. Much more higher flexibility, easier to get in, get out, and also reset. Um, and you just go down 20, 30 CS against a LeBlanc and you outscale her really hard. Um, so I think there are a lot of options that he could have gone that were not Vex. So I, I, it was a baffling pick, but by no right. means the, the reason the way they lost. Um, but it, it, it's interesting because you start to wonder like if he was on a champion that he was more comfortable on, can play make more, does he carry the game? Because right, it's that's like, what I'm Vex saying. is not a Vex is not a carry champion, right? Vex is like a snowball champion where you just start resetting on resetting and killing people, and as soon as they walk up, they just get one shot, right? But it's just so hard to actually pull that fantasy off in pro play. Yeah, and I think that's what yeah, I wasn't a fan of it. it boils down to. It's like I, I don't think Vex is maybe necessarily bad uh, in certain situations, but you mentioned it, Mitchell, like in, in these types of comps or this meta, like it's, it's really hard because you need those resets. And that's what it felt like. It felt like he couldn't get in there. He would launch his ult, but he, you could tell that he like never took it. Cause he's like, I, yeah. I don't think, you know, this is a good idea. Cause he'll just die instantly. Whereas I think someone like an Ari or Lissandra, you know, they provide more value. Like they're useful. Like Vex is not really useful here. Like, yeah, you could yeah, fear, but if you can never, 
Yeah. It's not just a fear. It's the reset you're looking for. And it just didn't really make sense in this uh, situation. Uh, another kind of thing that I was looking at, especially in the jungle with contracts, was like he was so good with Poppy. And yet he only picked it one time this series. And it was never banned. And Poppy, I think, has maybe just by eyeball test, seems like it's kind of dropped out a little bit um, in favor for other junglers. But what did you Wait, think about what? that? Because... Yeah, like Poppy, I felt like he he did really well with Poppy contracts, especially, and he only picked it once. So, uh, what are your thoughts on on his play? Because he picked Trundle a lot, but again, like I would have loved to have just seen him on his signature pick where he did so well this this uh, split on. Uh, yeah, my thoughts on it is, let me let me check real quick, but I'm pretty sure he had Poppy banned in game two, and then all the other games it was basically up. For why he didn't take it. Honestly, it's hard for me to tell. Like, you see characters like Azir, right, that could use mm. it, uh, could be interpreted. There was a game with Azir Renekton. There was a game that was like Kenan, Oriana, Nocturne. So like, nobody's getting stopped by it, right? So that's why you don't pick it that game. But the last game, it was Le- LeBlanc, Viego, Sejuani. Like, I don't know. I mean, Trundle is a good pick, but Trundle can only normally. But Trundle into only one tank and you only have yeah. one target to build divine sunder against like it just felt a little strange i think it might have been a scrim thing they might have just been like oh all these people are practicing for poppy so i'm not confident with playing poppy and like i think contracts had a game at the end of the regular split where he got like just dist- no no maybe it wasn't him someone got destroyed early game on poppy and just couldn't catch up again um but it is just very very strange that it was only played once and not even in this series it was on the other one mm. Yeah, um, I think uh, Poppy is much better than uh, what the uh, priority on the series was. I- I'm actually baffled that Poppy wasn't actually taken more. I, I thought Poppy was banned out every game, but it wasn't. And then, yeah, um, yeah. I-, I think it is because of the Trundle matchup. So we saw what Blabber was able to do against Vi. Um, that's why I've been saying Vi is really not that great at all, because you can do that kind of stuff to her. Mm-hmm. Um, but Poppy isn't as reliant on Vi as snowballing because she's much more um she has much more utility and much more like different options Vi has like one or two modes right she goes in and she jumps on you and you either win the fight or lose the fight right but yeah. poppy can do a lot of things she can split team fights she can uh, peel she can do soft engages uh she can eat people away i mean her kit i think is really versatile and powerful i think that Maybe Contracts got some PTSD from game one from getting crushed by Trundle so hard. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to go for it. But I think like even in situations where um, it, the, the draft doesn't totally favor a Poppy, her clear is really fast right now because of the monster buffs. And she just has so much damage in the early game and so much utility in the mid and late game that I think it's always worth it to consider. But uh, if you look at it, I mean... Yeah, I, I really think like there was a lot of times where Poppy should have been prioritized maybe over Vi or the Nocturne or even yeah. the Diego, right? But it just wasn't uh, picked. So I that's a confusing one for me. I don't know why or what the reason is. I, I do think maybe it's just afraid of the level one. But I mean, yeah. then, then again, also Poppy's level one is not even that bad. You can kite pretty well with your Q and your and your uh, your passive shield. So. Yeah, that's I have no idea. <laughs> well, I mean, I th- either way, I think, uh, you know, lower bracket, I think they have a really good shot again. Uh, I don't think they'll be done. It's uh, again, I, I like their style, even though it's not the cleanest. Uh, but what about cloud nine? Because this for them is for me, at least looking at them, it's not a good look for them because they they are not. I mean, they barely escaped this one, honestly, which is kind of surprising. Uh, but got to get your thoughts on on them. Uh, you know, where where do they need uh, to fix some problems? Uh, what what maybe did you think they did well? Uh, and Alistair, you know, I got to ask you, man, Ash support. I know you're not a fan at all, but uh, there was one game where it worked well in game one and then in game four it did not uh, actually work out that well. So anything about the that series or that that team C9? What, what do you guys think about them? Yeah, well, I'm I mean, still going to quick... stand by what I said. I still don't think it's good. Nah. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm. I'm less, or sorry, I'm more okay with it because it's Sven playing it, who's an actual AD carry player and is actually good enough to play the champion properly rather than just sitting two screens away, hitting W and occasionally getting a semi value hawk shot. 
he knows how to play the champion. He's played it for years, and he actually has the hands to play it. So I think it I think it works better on Zven, but I'm still not a huge fan. I think it, I, I think it, I do think it worked very well in that situation because yeah. Sivir can't play the game against or Sivir or not, it will never be able to play the game against Callista Ash. And though even then, FlyQuest should have won that game. Honestly, it they CLG. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Black West. Um, <laughs> CL CLG should have hundred percent won game one. Uh, they just like did everything in their power to not win. Mm. Cloud Nine got everything they wanted, especially that level one made it really rough. And CLG's bot lane did not play the lane very well. For some reason, they're trying to contest wave level one when they both get outranged. It was it was hard to watch, but I just don't think that the Ash is what won the game. Well, I will say like so as much as a fan as I am of Ash support. Uh, I will say in game one, to give credit, like they really went like Zven went with the Hail of Blades build build uh instead of going uh the typical comet trying to poke kind of thing. Like he went for the the runes that actually give you lane dominance and with Callista Ash, that works really well. Um uh, and not just that, um, you know, talking about late game, Ash one of her weaknesses, she doesn't have any you know, uh, escape and she's squishy and Callista kind of helps with that. Right. So I felt like they, they picked it great lane dominance, um, you know, and then with him going the straight up hail of blades build and going, I didn't know about the umbral glaive. Like I, I felt like the going the, you know, the man immune is fine, but, uh, the, the umbral glaive worked because they were so ahead. But anyways, that's why I think it worked in that situation. I don't think, Otherwise, it would be good in pro play, but that that was just my caveat there. Even though I do like the Ash support, I I honestly don't think it it was would have been that good uh, in pro if it weren't for those situations. Well, I think ahead. in a situation where they had um, the Callista, like it makes sense, right? But with the Draven, it's so all in. The second you lose a little bit, like yeah. there's no nothing Ash offers to bring you back until she hits like level nine, where she has like super short cooldowns and can do a lot. Um, however, I, I I would say the rest of C9 played kind of badly i think this uh, this is the kind of series where you win and you look a little worse for the wear coming out of it even though it was entertaining and it was cool to watch i think zen still doesn't really have the best engages his amumu game was kind of meh um he has good laning i think overall most of the laning has like you can see berserker Sven is like a good lane like yeah. they can win and at least beat luger poom in this series right um and then i wasn't super impressed by uh Blabber. Or, or fudge that much and honestly or jensen <laughs> okay i wasn't yeah. impressed by anyone <laughs> by anyone <laughs> um so except for like berserker is still good and everyone knows that it's not he he needs a better support though i think he needs a real support player i think zen is good for how long he's been playing but it's just so weird to me that you have so much talent on your adk role and you don't have a real support yeah, yeah i I, I wanted to talk a bit more about the Ash pick. Um, yeah. So I we were talking about it in in the call actually when we were watching it, and I I think that yeah. So coupled with what Alistair said, uh, Sivir and Renata tried to contest the level one wave, and were trading autos for some reason, and that's super troll, right? When you're in that lane like Callista, uh, Callista Ash versus Sivir Renata. As Sivir Renata, you actually just AFK and you pick up what you can get, and you if you you could be down a million CS, it doesn't matter. You're gonna outscale like crazy. Uh, and they didn't do that. They died <laughs> and they kept fighting yeah. and they kept dying. Uh, but it was so that was a big problem. But I think the more contentious problem was just the level one invade. And it, it led to more of the fact that um, the Ash support was actually there to like bridge the jungle gap and how useless Vi is early on in the game. They invaded level one. Vi took Q, didn't get the buff, and they split the map so Vi could actually never gank bot lane because otherwise he would just give up a, a whole quadrant of his jungle. Mm -hmm. And uh, his tempo was so far behind, because what we didn't see on screen, but if you like paid attention really closely, was during a time when bot lane was fighting, right? Blabber on Trundle, he took his, uh, he took Vi's blue in front of his face, right? And then Vi tried to, to Q and take it, didn't get it. And then he took his own uh, bot side jungle a little bit, and then he went all the way to top side jungle and then Vi didn't have Smite, and Trundle just yoinked the red buff in front mm. of Vi's face. So Vi was like four or five, I don't know, a ton of camps down pre like five minutes and the whole level down. And I think like that was the main like difference maker was that even though all this shenanigans happened in bot lane where 
you know, Clista and Ash are getting kills and, and snowballing and poking them down. It shouldn't have mattered. The real thing that mattered was that Vi was completely invalidated from the game from level one and like got totally, totally wrecked in a kind of an unlucky way. Like imagine you're about to finish your buff and then Trundle smites it at literally like 400 HP. That's yeah. just, that's really unlucky. Like that is just game losing. That's mental breaking. Um, so I, I think that was the bigger thing is that, I mean, Ash provides a lot level one, especially if you go Halo Blades. So yeah. um, I, I think that, that snowballed the game so where it, you could kind of see CLG just completely mental boomed, right? And then you have Palfox TPing 1v3. You have all this weird engages and stuff happening that don't make sense. Vi going in 1v5 when everybody's leaving. So I think the level one kind of just boomed CLG. But honestly, right, even with that level one, and okay it, it's pretty bad by getting her only buffs stole she had got zero buffs in the yeah that's right yeah that's, that's pretty bad i still think the game was winnable it, it, they were just too mental boom because calista and ash are not champions in the mid and late game mm -hmm. they just don't exist really so especially against that comp right silver renata that that's some ridiculous scaling in the bot side um so i i do think that while it was interesting that it worked out and they got really lucky. Cloud9 did for the first 15 minutes. It's just not, it's like a cheese strat. It only works once. And it, when it does work, it's like, it's got to really, really work. It's got to roll over them. Cause like we were saying in the call, and I think a lot of people might agree if they understand the draft enough, like CLG was down like what, six, seven, eight K. It doesn't really matter. Their comp was so bad. Like CLG, C9's comp had no damage into Silas and Sejuani and Renata. Yeah. So. Um, that uh, that's just my take on on the Ash bot lane. I I don't think it's good. I 100% think it's a cheese pick. Great for best of fives as a one off. But yeah, obviously. Yeah, obviously didn't work again. You know, when they tried <laughs> yeah. it again. So yeah, I I honestly wasn't impressed at all with C9. I honestly think they're in a lot of trouble. Uh, because I, which makes me happier as a TL fan because it it means that their chances of going to Worlds is is uh, much higher if if Cloud Nine is not really in the picture. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm hoping, you know, as a fan of TL that that doesn't continue, like that they keep playing streaky, but team liquid and FlyQuest after game one, I was, I was worried. I was a little worried, but, uh, then after watching game two, I was like, okay, this is over. And Wait, you know. what happened in game one of both series? What the yeah. hell is going on? Jitters, <laughs> like, maybe? I don't know. Did, no, neither of them. All it felt like. Okay, yeah. besides maybe Cloud Nine, CLG, TL, and FlyQuest all had their monitors off in Game <laughs> no. One of their series. It <laughs> was you. so weird. Like, yeah, FlyQuest won, yeah. but you see, like Jose Diodo going for the most terrible engages ever, <laughs> ulting in on Sivir, ulting in on an Olaf. Dying randomly, getting yeah. football, getting solo killed by Ignite Top. Imagine picking Ignite Top and actually losing to it in pro play. That is just awful, man. That is just actually next level trolling. So I don't know what the hell was going on in that first game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think this is just the trend across the world and it kind of has been for a long time. People just like game one's the game to like try to put some picks in, yeah. try to put pressure. It's not necessarily a throwaway game, but like you saw the Syndra, right? Like, have we seen Syndra all year? Like, Ass maybe like pick. once, twice. Actually terrible. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's uh, good either. <laughs> I mean, the idea behind picks like this and other shit around the other regions is like you you do the first game, you pick a pick that like you probably don't mean to like really high prio, but if you win with it and you know you're the better team, you're just gonna pressure them. You're gonna make them feel like, oh, I got a Banzillion, I got a build, and whatever the crap, Ash support, right? And then you then you get the picks you actually want, and so this is like. Oftentimes you'll see the higher ranked team or the higher odds team pick something random like that. And like they also added the Olaf in. Like it, it's it was a lot of pressure. They were trying to get solo kills. They were trying to just, you know, stop the other lanes and then screw up their draft plans. It didn't work. They still had chances to win at times because FlyQuest was playing really bad too, but mm -hmm. Team Liquid was definitely playing worse uh in that game. Uh yeah. The rest of the series, holy moly. That was like illegal. What what they did for the rest of the series like managed to overwrite like how bad game one was because they just were sort of like, okay, when we actually try, like there's these guys aren't even in the same league. Like it's not yeah, close. it was really um, evident in game two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. What I will say is what I'm worried about for Team Liquid is if they're only one series away from Worlds. I think uh, yeah. if they win the next one, they're in Worlds, right? Okay. Um, but my concern is like they seem to do really well when they have a like a big big lead. 
but like this team still isn't like hasn't shown me the ability to be clean and late game yeah. and come back. Like, and when we go to Worlds, you're not gonna have Bjergsen, Whippo, and everyone like stomp the other people mm -hmm. that hard or at all, to be honest. Like, Whippo has had a history of being very good in EU, and then he goes to Worlds and loses to the Shy or loses to three six nine if he three six nine is going right. Whoever's gonna go from LPL and also SK probably gonna be at least good enough to not get stopped right yeah. so what's the plan then um i'm getting ahead of myself i want to see like we get to worlds and then you know it's kind of a <laughs> then we'll worry point. about it then. <laughs> my, my biggest worry about tl is their team fighting yeah, yeah it's, it's it been a big worst. problem it's, it's like one of the bad. worst in the league <laughs> yeah it's it's up there like they're I, I don't know they're losing a lot of things a lot of team fights they should not be losing yeah and i mean i think you know it's it's really weird because I've always said this is a smart team. They got a bunch of veterans or great minds for the game. And it does seem like um, their early game macro is is really good. Part of it is them winning lanes. Uh, but I also think they make really good decisions for the most part. They seem pretty consistent in their gameplay, uh, even the games they lose. But um, I don't think they fight well like together. I don't think they're mechanically that great either. Like even core is... <laughs> Like, <laughs> Core is making some oopsies as well. Like, and I'm just like, man, I I don't know. It's like it's it's like the, uh, what do you call it? Like, I so I'm gonna equate this again to basketball, but like you know, playground ball. You got the old guys like myself, and then the young okay. bucks. Young bucks are physically better shape, faster, can outrun you, and all, all this stuff. But the problem is like they don't have any like wisdom for the game. And so like a team of old guys will still win because they know how to play basketball. Like they know how to set pick and roll, space out, you know, properly, when to move, when not to move, when to cut, you know, get box out and all that stuff. And I've seen it over and over again, right? And Mitchell's yeah. shaking his head, like, what are all these things that I you're have saying? No idea what you're saying. <laughs> Freeze the wave, man. Freeze yeah. the could have wave. made up all those words and I would have yeah. believed you. Some of them I did make up, so <laughs> you'll right never know. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them, yeah, yeah, some of them you, you won't even know. But my point is, is that that's what Team Liquid feels like to me. They feel like the team of veterans, you know, besides Han Sama, really, but uh, of these. A veteran. Hans yeah, Hans true. Is a fat veteran. Yeah, so there you veteran. go. Like, he it's kind of like. He almost got the semifinals against SKT on Misfits. He's oh, yeah, been that's around. Right. I, I forgot. Five, that's right. Five years ago. Yeah. Five years yeah. <laughs> so then it even solidifies my point, right? Like yeah. they're not the guys that are going to have the the great mechanics or whatever. And honestly, it shows. But they they do know of the game, and that's my that's my worry is that they they know the game, but when they come to players that are actually really skilled at it, it that's where they're gonna they're gonna suffer. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna come in with the uh, I don't know what it's called the anti copium anti hopium angle for TL okay. as I usually do. Um, mm -hmm. So here, here's the hate. I, I right. don't. I actually felt like this series was really bad for them. I know it looked what? great. Yeah, it was okay. because they revealed they have to ban Yumi Lulu every game. That is just so bad in this meta. It's it's yeah. very much an enchanter dominant meta. It's all around the world. If you can't play Yumi Lulu and you're banning it every game, the other enemy team is gonna play an enchanter. You can snowball as much as you want on Nautilus and Alistair. You're gonna get outscaled super hard. And you, and you know what happens when your engages are not exactly perfect? You get out sustained, you get out tanked, and you just get out statted by enchanters. And that's what's been happening, right? They play engage supports every game, and it's coupled with their bad team fighting. They're gonna get outscaled in every single team fight. It's really, really bad to not have enchanters in your wheelhouse. I'm glad that they can pick the Seraphine bot, but Seraphine should be a very contentious pick. So, like, if they're ever on red side, are they actually going to ban Yumi, Lulu, Seraphine? I don't know. We'll see. That's going to be real sus, though. Uh, the second thing is that, all right, getting rid of game one from the memory. All other three games were complete stomps in the early game. And I still haven't seen the same problem that Kevin mentioned just a little bit earlier. And in all, we've all mentioned in previous podcasts, what happens if they don't stomp the early game? We haven't mm -hmm. seen what happens with TL. Can they win a game if it's a close 30 minute, five, 35 minute game where like it's even in gold, the draft is fairly even, right? We've never seen them win those games against a top team all year long, really. So neither of those problems got solved in this series. And in fact, the, the Enchanter problem made it seem like it was worse because now it, they revealed to everybody they're not going to play Enchanters unless it's Seraphine bot. Mm. Um, so I, I think that is just pretty problematic for them because i do think FlyQuest was a, was a significant tier below them 
I was expecting a 3-0, 3-1 anyways. I didn't care that they won like that. So that's that's my uh, anti-copium take. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, the good news is they did, as we said, like in the last two weeks of, of uh, regular season until now, they've been prioritizing engage and like they look better for it. Core JJ is the best engager on the team, probably one of the best in the league, even if he makes mess ups like that's just that's the nature of playing engaged support you're going to mess up sometimes it's assuming the other people aren't crap the reason he was engaging so well when he joined is one he was probably better when he joined the league anyways but he was much better comparatively to everyone else when he joined the league. Like people true. were just grouping up he could get three plus man i started knockups and it was easy um so i'll give i'll definitely agree with you on that i will say that like fly quest once those two were banned were forced to also like match with like rom and alistar or whatever like they were also yeah, playing takes right yeah, but yeah. like it, 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 it's like when those two are banned, like they're what's next on the support tier list, and I guess some support players aren't as comfortable. Like, I don't think uh, Afro's Nami was like, you know, that impressive. Like, it didn't feel like it did anything. Uh, I do agree that when it gets to worlds, unless there's like a patch that puts Yumi and Lulu, or at least one of them, out of the meta, like it is going to be a problem. To this next series, I the think when it only gets thing to the very that they can series. really. <laughs> the only thing they can really rely on is I think that Seraphine pick is a big deal. The fact that Hansama didn't look like double lift on an enchanter is a good thing. It's a very mm -hmm. good thing. Yeah. And they I think they tried it once at the end of the regular season either too, but it didn't look as solid like they won, obviously, because mm -hmm. it's Seraphine. But uh yeah. the, their willingness to continue to pull it out is very valuable. I think Seraphine is one of those like AD carries hate to play her, but she's super busted. She's yeah. so busted. She's Can't like confirm. one of the most broken champions in the game. Absolutely one of the most broken champions. Can in you the confirm game. that you, you don't like to her? play her? Or you can I confirm, can confirm the... both parts of that statement. She's really <laughs> broken, but she's not fun to play. Uh, <laughs> she's kind of fun. No, she's kind of fun when you get to late not... game. You just like throw abilities it, constantly. It's pretty fun. It's fun. Yeah, put on an auto clicker there. on my four keys and hope for the best. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Uh, hey, uh, Alistair, just side note. I, you know, I thought about you yesterday and I played Yumi. I thought about you, and then I said, you know what? This is for my boy, Alistair, and I, play, I played you. Yeah, I won. <laughs> so, uh, side note there. But, uh, you know, one thing I really did like with uh, Team Liquid 2 with Bjergsen is he pulled out the Swain again. Uh, that was with the Seraphine pick as well. But, man, I, and that was against Azir because we talked about that matchup and how Swain has a little bit of trouble against Azir. He was down yep. CS. I'll give him that. But... He's good with that champ, or that champ is just good and nobody's playing it. I don't, I don't know. Whatever the case is, I, it works for them, and I hope that he picks, you know, Swain again or Ari. His Ari is was pretty oh, good too. Man. But uh, so many comments about the draft that make it so that like Swain should not have been a good pick there, but it was because they ended out their draft. FlyQuest ended their draft with Lucian Nami when they mm -hmm. had the chance to pick something like Jinx TK, TK to completely nullify the Nautilus. Jinx to completely outrange the Swain. Mm -hmm. It still would have been a tough draft because they gave over Seraphine. But like you pick a short range eighty carry that doesn't scale into Swain, Seraphine, yeah, you're just begging to lose, man. So I I am like, yeah, Swain got away with murder there, but he got he could have gotten really screwed over if because the Azir is quite good into him and there are a lot of eighty carries that could have been quite good into him. Um and then also just like the early rotation from FlyQuest of Aatrox, Vi, and Azir mm. is just the most troll, like, terrible draft suicide ever. And then you take Ignite top. Also, I, I it's just like, dude, you're <laughs> Swain, yeah, is really happy into Aatrox and Vi. Like, uh, so I, I think FlyQuest committed draft suicide, honestly. And um, I still wasn't super convinced that Swain should be ever, not ever, but... Swain is good with Seraphine, right? That is, mm -hmm. a lot of champions are very good with Seraphine. So it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it's pretty sus to pick it into his ear, I think. Like, it's a little sketchy. I think that he got away with just being a better player than Dukui. He had a very off series. I mean, all of FlyQuest had a really bad series. So Yeah, um, that's true. Okay. That's, that's just my take. I If we want to talk about FlyQuest, I have so many opinions on how terrible their drafts were. I can bring, bring it in. Bring, start I, I start it everyone, off, man. I don't think anyone disagrees with you. I think there are a lot of terrible drafts this, this weekend. Yeah, a lot of terrible drafts. The, the Game 4 draft, when they picked Vayne Alistair. Are you kidding me? Picking Vayne <laughs> without an enchanter? What are you doing, oh, man? Yeah. Alistar is already a bad champion, and Vayne is yeah. not much better. Nope. Actually terrible. I get that it's like an age old, like ten year old counter to Sivir, but dude, don't do it, man. Like, don't do it. It's not <laughs> worth I'll it. I'll be honest with you. I've played both sides of that matchup, and it is not. A, it is not really a counter anymore. Mm, yeah, I'll, I'll just be honest with you. It is not that good for Vayne. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, 
that's rough. I, I do think the LeBlanc is super troll. I know we've been seeing LeBlanc more. I, I just don't think it's optimal. I don't think it's like a terrible pick. It's definitely not the worst pick in the world or any means, but it's so easy to like just let LeBlanc do her thing, go down a little bit, get chunked here and there, give up some space, and then just outscale her, man. It's mm -hmm. like we were talking in the Discord chat. She does always have that pressure to potentially one shot or really poke out a carry. But like, dude, Azir, you build Banshees and you can still kill the enemy tank. You can still kill the enemy front line. LeBlanc has to build full damage to have a chance at one shotting the enemy carry. And that is her only target. So I think it's just LeBlanc is like, if you're playing her, you got to snowball like stupid crazy. You need all the drags and all the Rift Heralds, all the turret plates, or it's not worth it. And I felt like two games of LeBlanc from Takui, you're not smurfing on her. So it was not by any means worth it. You should have just picked a control mage. Um, like Takui has played a lot of Talia. I think she should, he could have just kept playing that. It scales so much better. Way more utility, way easier to play too. Like yeah. LeBlanc is so hard if you're not, if your team isn't winning. Um, I also think just Ignite top in general is just really terrible in pro play. It never got punished by Centurion, really. But like, you can just you can just abuse waves so hard by just sending people up. And like, Ignite tops should always just fall back behind like crazy because you don't have TP to save your lane state if you get pressured by the enemy jungle in mid or even support. But no one ever did that against the Ignite top. So FlyQuest, as they're like raining fan super super disappointing <laughs> you came down dude. hard on I, them yeah dude i felt like they played so far below their level i'm just talking about they like did. draft and summoner spells and runes now i'm not even talking about their gameplay it was so bad <laughs> jose diodo and afromu actually got paypal'd like legitimately paypal'd into the next series being like i just go play tsm man like i'm so done i love how okay, mad you are at them right now, because <laughs> you are like their biggest fan and it's like you you laid into them man but i get yeah, it uh, it's that's pretty that's pretty disappointing uh did, did you alistair or kevin have any uh thing on fly quest if not we could move on to the upcoming games i think this was uh, we we said this in the preview so i'll just keep it short this isn't that FlyQuest is a bad team. This is just a terrible matchup for FlyQuest. They, they're they a very solid team overall, and they got stopped in the early game. Like, what are you going to do? With the firepower they had in the belly to lane, uh, there's, it just wasn't enough. I will say that Philip was actually okay, at, at least in game one. And, like, the whole team's getting crushed. Like, what are you going to do as top lane if the jungler is just, like, smurfing on your whole team, right? And your jungler is, mm -hmm. like, MIA. So two things. Philip was actually pretty good. Jose Diodo is hard capping this team. He's good, but he's not good enough, right? He's like thought. top five, top six, probably. And by top, I mean he's sixth or fifth best <laughs> jungler yeah. in the league. So for this team to make it to the next level, they would need a Santorin or somebody, like, you know, ironically, considering he was on this team before. So, yeah, I, I actually give Philip some credit. He did really good in game one, actually. And then the other games, like, I mean, he wasn't great, but like the team was just falling I, apart. There's nothing I you can do. You have terrible. a bang Alistar bot lane. What are you going to do as Camille? Like, yeah. how are you going to engage? How are you going to do anything? So I just want to interject. I, I thought Philip had a great game one, but he actually had a full on exact summit cosplay in game two. He went zero, seven and zero. Just saying. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Well, Literally what? exact summit score. He, he well, went what? from regular season summit to playoff summit in the span of half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's so true. You I just, game one. I just thought it was him. funny that like game one, you know, he gets that solo kill on Bwipo and absolutely dumpsters him. And then in game two, Bwipo just does it right back to him on Sejuani. Yeah. And like, I don't know. Oh Ignite gosh, Sejuani dude. is actually really, really hard to Heck, play against. Like, you yeah. will, you'll get solo killed all the time. It's not no. unusual at all. I don't really like well, it. Well, it's yeah, just like why it. pick Renekton when Ignite to Juani exists in the game in the first mm -hmm. place. Like that, it's just a, a better question. Renekton in every yeah. way. Well, not every way, but I, I have some comments about Renekton we can talk about later. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, let, let's let's preview some of these uh, upcoming games. Uh, I don't really want to talk about the lower teams because you know it's the lower teams. I'd like to get into the juice of things of like Hundred Thieves versus TL and EG versus C9. Wait before. Uh, Okay. I just want to. I just want to add. Does anybody actually think TSM or Golden Guardian is going to win? Because we can just. We can just. Yeah. We just, just. We can just. No. Just rush it off right now. Right. No. no okay. I don't not. think so either. I. Yeah. I, I mean, I think CLG is going to three zero Golden Guardians. Yeah. Yeah. I think FlyQuest might like three one. Honestly, I, I FlyQuest. Think, I think TSM will wins. take. I think TSM will yeah. take a game off them. I expect a three one for for FlyQuest. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. I'm on the same page. That the was closest one. 
is if there were to be an upset, it would be TSM Fly, but I think it's pretty unlikely. Right. All right. Exactly. We there we go. Out. Done. <laughs> Did it. <laughs> Over with. Uh, now to the good stuff. Uh, which one do y'all want to talk about first? I I honestly think the 100 Thieves TL one is going to be the more spicy one because I think they're actually closer in, in level of competitiveness. Uh, so do you want to do think e going to get smacked. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Do you want to go over EG C9 real quick? Like anybody think C9's yeah, gonna win? We can make it quick. I don't think C9's gonna win. I don't yeah. think C9's gonna take more than a game, and I don't think they're gonna look that great while doing it. Unless mm. I would love for them to prove me wrong. It's better if we have better competitive teams, right? And EG needs to get tested. But like this is this C9, like the fact of the matter is we kept on giving them a lot of like, you know, space because they, they formed on like week two or week three, right? Oh no, the week two, because week one they lost super week oh three. But yeah. like this team, I think the biggest deal and the thing I, I wanted to pinpoint here because it makes sense is like Jensen's not that good right now. Like he, yeah, should, I, I was not. hoping for playoff Jensen. Okay. That's what I was hoping for. I was like, regular season, I don't care. He can warm up all he needs. He's just not playing that well. And Fudge isn't playing that well either. Dude, the guy's mm -hmm. not even like, in my mind, he's not even top three top laners in the league. That's a problem. He only took one split off and he was still actively playing the game. Right. Like, I'm pretty sure he didn't even get into all pro. He did not. Uh, so, yeah, he didn't, yeah. uh, Jojo Pion is playing way better. He has been on a very high pressure situations recently. And it, where are you supposed to get your edges then? Like, yeah, I don't have a lot of faith. Like, the problems in Spire is just as good as Blabber, if not better. And currently, right now, he is better, right? So, much better. Uh, yeah, it's better. a really bad look for C9. They're, all their points of strength are basically Berserker. And then that's it, yeah. <laughs> Berserker, yep. yeah, there's no, nobody else, right? Yeah. Nobody else is like peaked. If Blabber and Berserker show up, that's still a very hard matchup. So, I see no reason that EG should drop more than the game, yeah. I would imagine Berserker, and I, I think Mark Z said this on the dive or something like not a knock on Sven, but imagine Berserker with like an actual support, like a real good support, like how good like i wonder if that actually changes c9 where they become an actually like a good oh, tl team. berserker tl berserker think about berserker with core jj it's basically Fucking just like give ruler it core jj right i want it i so want bad. that to happen <laughs> i want that to ha don't put that like that thought so in my mind man. Han, Han Sama might go might go back to eu or something i, I don't know no, nah, I, I could. Mean, he might he might probably not that expensive originally but the buyout that c9 sets is going to be huge. i mean I don't know. I mean, I, actually, yeah. he's probably he's probably in NA to retire. Let's be honest. Hansama, <laughs> Berserker. Yeah. Oh, Hansama. Oh yeah, Hansama yeah. is. I don't. We'll, we'll we'll see what he does with his career. I mean, he's been around for a long time, and he was on yeah. Rogue for so long. Yeah. So I, yeah. we should also sure. talk about All Pro, by the way. Yeah, yeah we yeah, we can do that sure. after. Let, yeah, we'll we'll know, hit uh, you, probably after the yeah after the, after, the, after the games. Um. The games of EGC9. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm. You going EG? Yeah, I think. Yeah. I'm the same way. I'm going EG. EG as well. I I will say that EG can sometimes mess around, so we'll see. Yeah. I don't. We don't know what summer split um, playoff EG version looks like. They did have, you know, an interesting start last split, right? And then they completely swept. So maybe they won't turn it on until later in playoffs. Who knows? Maybe they'll hide picks. Who knows? And that'll cost them in draft or a game or two. Um, yeah, I I think it's very EG favored. The way I want to talk about C9 possibly winning, though, is the level ones. I think that level ones, C9 did plan some out, and I don't think any team is really attacked, inspired in the jungle, and or really forced a jungle matchup or like a jungle plan. So that's what Blabber did in game one. It was just a complete jungle plan do domination, just completely ruined Vi. I don't think EG is going to make the same mistake and and picking such a bad uh, early game comp, like a level one comp that we can get invaded like that, or even have better padding. But that is the opportunity I see for C9 to be able to do this if they can consistently have change-ups in how they attack the jungle, but have that be their main game plan. Uh, put Inspired down, neuter his champion pool, have a favorable jungle matchup, have pushing lanes, and snowball from there. The problem is it's just EG can fall behind, and then, yeah, we have three losing lanes, and then we just out team fight you because we scale better. So... It's going to be a hard sell for C9, but I think it's going to be a 3-0 or 3-1. I'm going 3-0, though. Yeah. I will add in, like, as far as I can tell in this tournament, this if you win this, you're in Worlds. Yeah, you're in Worlds. So in there's third. no way they're hiding anything. Like, you, you should just put everything into this match. This should be the most intense match of the tournament, like, because this is an NA Worlds. 
So like yeah. more so than the finals, more so than the like honestly, based on track record, you want to just aim for third, <laughs> like third or second. Like don't go for first because we're just gonna get absolutely like cursed, right? Like it's not like we get stomped even when we're first seed. Just our first seed doesn't get out, right? Three three usually it's enough to get out, but whenever our first seed goes three three, usually it's liquid or something. Is is the infamous example? They just don't get out. So I think everyone, this is gonna be the best games. Um, these are gonna be all of your strategies, everything you've been hiding, everything. Your try hard is has to be turned on here, right? Impact's gonna show up. Bjork's gonna oh, hope will show up. <laughs> like Hansama, I hope it doesn't tilt. Like I, I just want everything to happen this weekend, and then after that, like I'm going to go to Chicago for the final. So I hope Liquid's in it, but like EG is gonna be playing the hardest. If they lose here, like this is this is a really scary lower bracket. You have to win like yeah three, like three best of fives just to show up in the finals. Like, dude, that's cursed. A lot. Yeah. Um, I, I, uh, I don't, man, I don't remember what I was going to say. I was talking about, <laughs> as you were like Old talking, I was like, I had, a, I had a really good thought and then it was like, it just escaped my mind, you know? Uh, so does anybody else want to say something? Cause I totally forgot what Bo boomer brain, <laughs> the boomer brain is um, just, is just gone. Um, uh, I'll, I'll say something else. I'll, I'll say something else. Uh, no, I got uh, it. Jensen. I remembered. Okay. <laughs> I remembered. Uh, I'm going to predict what's going to happen. It's going to be game one, just like okay. the team liquid fly quest series where you're like, what is happening? What EG should be winning this? And you know, they're just kind of messing around, lose to C9 in a 40 minute game. And then the, the next three games, EG is just going to dumpster them. That's wow. That that's would, what's that would be interesting. That I think be this interesting. is interesting because they're gonna try something give first game. You know? Yeah. Anyways, right. before we leave C or C nine, I just want to say that TP when Le when Justin oh, was yes. like like four zero or something. And that was awesome. That was really funny. It is up there with one of the funniest worst plays ever because we're all watching mm -hmm. it and we're all yeah. like the instant he, t he started he started the TP. Everybody watching is just like. This is not going to go well for him. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is let's, let's, really be bad. let's be honest here, Mitchell. It's less memeable than C9's last mid laner, all right? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Um, that That is fair. I mean, perks. It, it, I mean, that play is up there with perks flash stunning award. Uh, that play is or up there. Double, or yeah. getting away, but then killing himself after for no reason yeah, on the yeah, same Joe champion. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm glad Renekton's back in the meta, right? Because then we get the flash ward stuns. We get <laughs> yes, the, uh, right. the this the summit memes, right? The 070 Renekton being solo TP'd by a rise into the back line and instantly getting popped. I love that stuff. So I, I hope we see more Renekton just for the memes. Hell I'm glad yeah. he's in the meta. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that's... Uh, that's our last. Wow, we did not say anything nice about C9. Uh, they, won the series, Dang, <laughs> they won the series, guys. They won. They won the series, and everybody thinks they're worse than CLG still. Yeah, so, I know. Because it felt like CLG, CLG was winning, and win. they were their own worst enemies. Yeah. Like CLG was the driving force in that series, and they shot themselves in the foot. And C9 was like. I guess we we take those. I know. We're like, <laughs> uh, okay, thanks, guys. We, we take those. Yeah. Hey, let's go. <laughs> All right. Uh, 100 Thieves TL, do we want to talk about that? I mean, I think that's the not spicy. Really, no, not really, no. Honestly. I think that's the more interesting I mean, match. You know? We don't really <laughs> need to. We don't have I mean, fans of either team. So no, I mean, I mean like, Team yeah. Liquid's going to win. There's nothing right. to discuss. Has anyone ever Thieves, met a 100 Thieves zero. fan, by the way? Actually, real talk yes. here. Yes. That's true. Yes. I This whole time, we've never, none of us ever, I haven't. ever supported them, even when they won, right? And I am. More of a hundred thieves fan than not a hundred thieves fan. I, I have my, <laughs> I I, I'll Mitchell. just come right out the gate and I'll say I, I, I think it's gonna be three. Yeah, they haven't committed thieves. any crimes or anything. I, I like them too. I think hundred thieves is gonna win. Also, I actually think it's it might even be a three one. Honestly, I think I, it's gonna be a three two. Favored as well. Yeah, yeah. I think they're favored. They're I, favored. I think the biggest. But do you think that's yeah. gonna happen, Kevin? <laughs> Come I mean, on! If you're asking my brain, it's, three, it's like a three. <laughs> He's having the same issue teams. I had with CLG C9. Yeah. <laughs> He's having but that like, exact same issue. Do you see this? Like, there's, there's no way I'm voting against it, right? Okay. Like, I have a okay. jersey with my username on it with the TL thing. I'm bringing okay. that to um, NA Finals. I, I I want Liquid to win. Hell I'm yeah, gonna yeah. vote for them for three two. I think that Hundred Thieves is the better team. They've had better form than even EG going onto here. Like, and in the recent playoffs, they have just been killer. Like, they mm -hmm. have been a better playoffs organization for the last two years, or at least year and a half straight, right? That's just yep. objectively true. 
Um, not even just better than Liquid, pretty much better than all the orgs in the league because yeah. like they are consistent. They have at least made finals like twice, right? And they won one. Um, maybe they got a final three times. Either way, they're super good nope. uh, at well, that. They, they uh, lost one game in the last like <laughs> like eight or nine or ten. So like mm -hmm. it is ridiculous. Um, this is one sided in that sense. Liquid is super lucky that they had to play FlyQuest. So the the only argument I have is they it's like classic. They got one more best of five to warm up through. It's not a lower bracket, but they got that game, right? And they got a lot of ego off that. They got a lot of momentum off that. If they can take game one, 100 Thieves is in trouble. If they lose game one, I don't know if Liquid rebounds. It could just be a disgusting 3-1, 3-0, you know? So I'm betting that the momentum carries through into 3-2. Dang. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I can't Dude, disagree. I mean, that was with a you. copium take, but I mean, you know, I, I can't yeah. disagree with you, man. Let's go, Liquid. Uh, Woo! All right. I guess that's. I guess it it, <laughs> it does look like Hundred Thieves is going to be favored, but I, I'm also like still rooting for TL. Anywho, I don't know. yeah, I, I mean, just think like personally, I think Hundred Thieves have a much better top. They have a much better do. yeah uh, jungle, and I think they have a much better AD carry right now. I think yeah, Team Liquid is favored in. The support, not by a crazy amount, and I think they're. I, I think Bjergsen's decently better than Abadage right now, but I mean, I, I don't know. I just, I just don't have the faith in Hansama right now, let alone the team fighting. Mm. I yeah. yeah, but I think the way I'm going to tackle this is how I usually do. Is I think that Team Liquid is just going to get draft dapped every single game. Like maybe if Team Liquid can sneak away a Seraphine, they can. Um, they can they can find a draft advantage, but it seems like honestly, like if FlyQuest is, isn't there committing draft suicide, all regular season, even last split in playoffs, I was just looking at TL's drafts and being like, Why are you guys so all in on the early game all the time? I hate it. I'm like, you guys are always so focused on the early game comps, early game champs. Maybe you have a little bit of scaling here and there, right? But then you play for early game, right? You sack stuff to get early game advantages and you can never translate into late game. And t I mean, 100 Thieves is just so good fundamentally. Like their late game is so insane. Like they're the type of team where they can have really strong early games because their laning phase and their players are just so damn good. But then even if they, they screw around and they do not fall, they do fall behind early because they have a bunch of late game champions and a bunch of push, uh, shoved in lanes, they just, they just, scales so hard their team fighting is so good it's like their team fighting is i would say eg is more clutch in team fighting but in terms of just like standard like the kind of team fighting that i want to see in terms of like we're not flipping but like we're doing mm -hmm. things like based on how our comps should play 100 thieves has that down on lock they are so refined and so like disciplined and that's just like such a bad matchup for for TL. Okay, like, man, we get it. Chaos. We get it. You like, <laughs> okay. you love a hundred thieves, man. Gosh, <laughs> I, I don't even. I think they're a little boring. Okay, I think that they're. It's cool that yeah. they exist, and I respect them. I do think they're kind of boring, right? I'm a, yeah. I'm an EG stan all the way, but like, hundred thieves is just like, what do you do against that? Like, you just need better <laughs> yeah. players, and then you need to be more disciplined to actually beat something like hundred thieves. Yeah. So, I mean, hundred thieves, maybe they come in a little slow. That did happen last split where they reverse swept TL in that five game series that, that mm -hmm. threw TL into the lower bracket. That could always happen. So mm -hmm. maybe 100 Thieves could be a little slow, right? There's a little bit of like controversy. Like, would you rather have a warm up series or would you rather wait to see your opponents play and like be cold for a week? So there's always that give and take of what's better, what's what's worse for each team. I Maybe it, it rolls in favor of TL, but I, I just don't see a way <laughs> they ever win. So, we get it. Yeah. You love 100 Thieves, Sorry. man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think there's a very clear way to win, and that's that's their top and 80 carry actually showing up to play the game. Yeah. yeah. Sure. But I just I don't think <laughs> and I, I don't think Blip on Hansam have been playing very well. That didn't. No, I, I, just, I I don't think Blipple has the champion pool to punish someone like like someday. Like if you want a champion pool to punish someday, you need counter pick and you need to smurf on him. Like when he blind picks a tank, you need to smurf on him with a carry. Like, I mean, you just need to Blipple. build Hallbreaker Scion and perma or perma group, right? There it yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, that's, that's a lock in meme right there. But yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Um but yeah, I mean Blippo, like he's playing like Aatrox, Olaf, a little bit mm -hmm. of GP, right? Stuff like that. And it's just like, dude, someday has answers to all of that in his champion. I've seen him be able to counter all that stuff. Like it's it's gotta be counter pick for top side and you need a hard winning matchup and you need to snowball the crap out of it. And honestly, you need like a hard like 
you basically just need Trundle for Santorin. You need to just stomp the early game and have winning matchups too for this to work out. It's it's such a hard look for TL. I I I, I think it's like, I mean, I think TL is a better chance than C9 versus EG, but not by a lot. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I brought up from regular season: eighteen hundred gold lead, fifteen for Liquid, three hundred for hundred thieves. It is Let's the go. way to win, right? If Liquid isn't winning by fifteen minutes, you can just pretty much cut the game over. But yeah. if they are, like, like I mean, Liquid isn't terrible at snowballing, right? They're not the best team fighters, but you don't really need to be that good when you're up 6k, right? So it, the option is there. And, like, the one thing I'll give for Hansama is, like, one, I don't think FBI is still playing that well. Two, he still has, like, he has the Seraphine, which is a, a giga pick. And he, mm -hmm. his Draven has getting better. Like, I think there was the, the fact that you have a Draven player, regardless of, like, you know, is he like the number one Draven player in the league or whatever? The fact that you have someone who's willing to pick Draven and has that threat means that certain picks like Sivir feel a little bit more uncomfortable, right? Certain picks just feel like, yeah, especially the way FBI is playing, like you have win cons, right? So the, this is why Liquid is a, in a much better spot than if C9 were in this part of the bracket, right? But it, it, it's still like 65, 35. Like Liquid needs to snowball. It's probably mm -hmm. 64. Yeah. Liquid needs to snowball. I and if they do three times out of five, then yeah, we win. Yeah, I, I I think yes, but the Draven bot lane matchup winning into Sivir is so dependent on winning jungle because what happens if you don't have a winning jungle or even if you don't have a winning mid sometimes is you go in on Draven, maybe you get a CS lead, maybe you even get a solo kill or two, but you can't actually snowball your lead if you're not winning through jungle. So it it's pretty it's pretty tough. And that's why like the whole if if they're gonna play a Draven comp. All of Team Liquid needs to show up and like not lose their lanes, um, and not get pushed in because otherwise it's rough. And then finally, it's the Enchanters, right? It, very clearly, Hundred Thieves can play all the Enchanters. Like who he is played Lulu, Yumi, Nami, Seraphine. They've even played Seraphine mid. I think FBI has played Seraphine uh, bot before too. And you guys can snowball all you want if you're playing uh, Alistair support though, because they like Nautilus. I think is is actually pretty good and fine as long as you're not playing against a, a Sivir. Alistar is not a but, real champ. No, Alistar, if you're picking Alistar or like some other engaged support, even Leona I think is a little sus right now, you're just going to get outscaled so hard. That 5 or 6k gold lead is going to mean so little unless you have the exact perfect 5-man pull into Giga Engage, right? Like you just need the perfect setup for every engage or you just get outscaled in every team fight. Like Moonstone shielding supports are so stupid right now. Um... And you can even take tanky runes. I, I see that sometimes, right? You're against it all in comp. You just go full tank runes on your support. You just go fall behind and you outscale like crazy because you can't get one shot uh, from the durability patch. So it's rough, man. I, I hope that Team Liquid, this is their biggest hope for me, is that they just suddenly start playing Yumi and Lulu really well. That that's how they actually get a favorable. What you didn't know me. is that this whole time privately, Core JJ has been practicing his Yumi. <laughs> Dude, I, mean, I don't, I don't, even think, it's, I don't think it's that Core JJ can't play it. I think it's that the team can't play with it. Yeah. That's what but I mean. I the Core team JJ, can't play with it. Yeah. Core, JJ Core JJ can, can play, play it. it. Fine. Yeah. But yeah. the team's just so reliant on him to be main engage. That's that. And I said yeah. that before. That's what I when when I noticed when I quote unquote solved Team Liquid's problems. That was one of my things. I was like, it's not that Core can't play Nami well or other Enchanters no, can, well. It's that it they well. need <laughs> him. Because especially yeah. seeing that episode where where Santorin and him were both disagreeing on when to go in and seeing Santorin's hesitancy to, to pull the trigger sometimes, especially like a Wukong, like, you know, it just yeah. it just goes to show that that's what is kind of uh, hampering them is that Cork doesn't have that option to play Enchanters because he has to be there engaged. So I totally then, see that. Yeah. And th yeah. this is where the rest of Team Liquid really lets down Corey J, right? Because we've seen Bjergsen try Lissandra, we've seen Santorin try uh, Wukong, and we've seen, like, Blippo play, like, pseudo-engages, right? But, like, we, it, they need to show up, so, like, I, I would love it if, like, what if, if we saw, like, a Gragas top, right? I, and then Blippo actually was able to engage, because we've seen him play Gragas top before mm -hmm. and actually have some some clutch plays. Yep. But we need to see that back. We need to see that again. We need to see him on Sejuani, just sack lane, and just start roaming. Like, I hate these Sejuanis that do nothing. They sit in lane and go even, and they go into the team fights, and they're freaking useless. Like, Sejuani is so broken uh, in the early game. You see an LPL being played in the jungle because she's so strong in the early game. She runs over certain jungle matchups through perma ganking, through not being able to be contested, through not being able to, like, 
basically face checking the Sejuani ever, but you just sit top, right? Don't don't do that, right? If you're Bupo and you're gonna play Sejuani top, just roam like crazy. Who cares if somebody gets a lead, right? Just, just get your bot lane ahead, unlock Core JJ, maybe. You know, okay, I don't think Bjergsen's very good on Lissandra, so just keep him on like Ari and, and like Azir and stuff like that. But yeah, that's like yeah, they, they're just so hamstringed. TL TL's strategy is so narrow, so. We get That's it, so man. You love 100 Thieves. God. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. but uh, seriously, let, let's talk a little bit about meta, right? Because uh, I know you wanted to mention Renekton. Uh, also, a lot oh, yeah. of Vi again. Um, yeah. Trundle again. Uh, so, yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about, about that. Uh, you want to lead off with that Renekton? Because I know you, you had something okay. about it. Yeah. I can lead off with Renekton. So, I, I actually called it that we're going to see, like, these really stupid Renekton LeBlanc comps because... Yeah um dragons and rift heralds got buffed uh even in the early game right so you can just like play this game where you're just like all early game and you put all of your your eggs in the get just get the rift herald yeah. and get, get the dragon basket and i actually think it's still viable if you can pull off the right draft but no team we saw in lcs looked good on it at all like almost all of the renekton games they actually started looking good like way after laning phase and that's because, actually, funny enough, Renekton is pretty dog tier late game, except when he has an enchanter. Renekton actually is a pretty freaking terrifying with an enchanter as a mid game uh, melee carry. Still falls off late game, of course, right? That's that's obvious. But yeah, um, if you have an enchanter on your team, Renekton will carry you in mid game fights pretty hard. So I think there's some viability in that. Looking at him as this early game bully. And like one shotting the enemy with like Renekton Nidalee or like Renekton Elise or even Renekton like Vi or Trundle or stuff, not as reliable and a little sus. You still need to play it really, really well to do that. But as a mid game carry, he's not bad. He's okay. Uh, I still think Aatrox is like just way better or even Sejuani, which is way better. But uh, if you really want to play Renekton and you're hamstringed in the draft, um, and you have an enchanter, he can carry you uh, pretty far. Um, but uh, nice. yeah, we're, we're seeing some pretty bad Renekton plays, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, like both it... Dokla, Fudge. Oh, my God. Fudge, he had the perfect flank. He was sitting in a bush, and he just left and threw away his flank. And then all of C9 just died after. <laughs> Do you guys remember that? It was like yeah. in game four uh, on the like near the bot red side in Hib. I was like, dude. What are you doing, Fudge? <laughs> yeah. Negative 200 IQ play. So he teleported um, in. Seeing... They didn't know where he was. He was sitting in the bush. He just walks out of the he bush. He just yeah. He just walks out of the bush, man. He was about to get. I think. Uh, I think the mid laner. I, someone was about to face check him. Um, and he would have gotten a one shot. But yeah. I um, mean, otherwise, uh, Renekton seeing play in other regions too. Um, I think in the Damwon series in game one, he got first picked. And there's a clip of like LS losing his marbles, and it's just the funniest thing. I love it when Renekton's <laughs> in the meta. He's yeah. so controversial. It's just my favorite thing. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, what else? What else? Did you guys have any anything else? Uh, yeah, yeah. As, uh, I wanted to point out, like, okay, so one of the things that Liquid has a huge issue with is they can't make Wukong work, and Wukong is like number mm -hmm. one pick ban in other regions. Like an LPL has been picked 18 times. The next highest is Trundle at 10, and that's a good segue into Trundle. Trundle is the most played in NA. I actually think NA players are good at Trundle. I think on average, they're pretty good. Like they yeah. know the pillar mechanic. They know how to, it's really good because Trundle pillar is like a non-committal, just like playmaking ability, right? It just yeah. like makes it really easy for your teammates to hit skill shots or to get engages and whatever, as long as you're like a relatively smart jungler. So I think Trundle is a good pick, but it's not good enough to always be picked as much as it has been picked. I think Vi is overrated. I love Vi. I play her a lot, but she's overrated and she needs to be picked a lot more intelligently for the comp, right? Like, there's like times where, like, there's not even a Zarya on the other team. So, like, the one argument I'm like, okay, if Vi shuts down Zarya, you're like kind of doing your job. But, like, there's oftentimes it's just picked for no reason. And I'm just like, all right, yeah. sure, let's see how that scales. And then you see how it goes, right? Uh, and then the last thing I'll mention is Poppy should still be higher priority. Like, yeah, maybe it's not like top pick or whatever, like, always picked. Like there were definitely good poppy angles and like from people who play poppy yeah so like yeah. i don't know what happened during scrims like obviously something must have happened for them to lose faith in it or people are just getting used to dodging poppy spells but like regardless of all that she's still good right her her base kiss got her damage is pretty decent and her denial of like two plus characters like if they have two plus denials 
especially in solo lanes, is absolutely worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I I think my, my comment on Poppy is that I think people over um indulge in the idea and like the fantasy of blocking dashes with her W. I think before her all of her crazy stupid buffs happened. That yeah, you probably only want to pick Poppy in specific scenarios where you can block a lot of dashes. But she's gotten so many buffs that like even if the enemy team doesn't have that many dashes, if you can get value out of your wall bang or out of your ulti, it's still worth it, right? Like a Swain has no dashes. But you know what completely ruins him is Poppy ulti. Like he's very slow, he's very predictable, he's got a large hitbox. He just knocked that sucker out. Yeah. And he's like so far Goodbye, away. Ult. It's yeah. like a, it's a very hard CC against something like a Swain or um, any other like Aatrox, right? You just knock that sucker out and his ulti runs out. So I think Poppy is like more ubiquitous than what teams are giving her credit. Like they think, oh, they have no dashes. Like why would we pick Poppy? Like, yeah, but she's just kind of OP right now. So I think you just pick it anyways, even if they don't have that many dashes. It's yeah. not a great matchup into Trundle specifically, but like it's so easy to avoid Trundle and outscale him uh, with just team fighting presence. So. Yeah. I also think, yeah, no one's playing the counters to Trundle right now. So, I mean, good for him. Yeah. Like, Trundle... That bodes well no for Santorin, though, because he's, he's a yeah. really good Trundle player. So. Well, no, he's just going to get it banned against him every game. So. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, last comment on Wukong is that I still think he's really strong. I think I think he's, like, still kind of broken, just kit-wise. But he has gotten quite a bit of nerfs, and I am starting to see in other regions, teams... And players, this is what happens when a super meta-defining broken champion is in the game and doesn't leave the meta for a long time, is players and teams, this happened to Lucian on me too, right? Players just get so good at playing against them that even though the, kit, the champion is broken, you still see it lose a lot and you still see it be useless. And I think that's what's happened. I was wa I watched almost all the regions, their their playoffs, and, and players, especially like AD carries and their spacing, they are just so good at playing against Wukong ranges now. It's like you can't do much against a flash uh, engage by Wukong, but like the positioning of your support, your enchanter support to not get hit mm -hmm. by the CC at the same time as Wukong, super ideal. And I think that Wukong is still good, but I wouldn't be surprised if he started to fall out of meta simply because, dude, players have gotten so good, especially in Asian regions. Players are so good at playing around that champion. Like it makes it feel like Wukong is not broken when he is. He definitely is, but. Players have gotten really good at playing against it. Um, and then finally, I think just like meta uh, in general that I just hinted at is I feel like when you go into a team fight or a pick or a skirmish, your ideal target is not actually the carry, but the enchanter support. I think you kill that little little shitter right first before you go and kill the ADC. Because <laughs> um, if you CC the enchanter and kill them, well, all of that effective shielding and healing and HP is gone. Yep. But if you focus and CC the ADs carry, well, they just get like a so much value out of their enchanter being able to buff them up. You use a lot of cooldowns, right? Oftentimes, ADC has um, has life steal and other ways to peel. So, like, I see all these teams jumping on Zeri, and I get it because Zeri is stupid as hell and should be never should just be banned every game for God's sake. But it's being seen playing a lot. I think there are times before Zeri is like really popping off and got a lot of stacks in her ulti or has isn't quite at three items, they actually just kill her support first. And then Zeri is just not as much of a champion without her support, without her getting shields and constant move speeds and heals and stuff like that. So um, I wonder how that will play, but I, I do think... I Unless mean, they have Yumi. I, I just, then you, well, yeah, you you're just SOL. I, I will <laughs> say that yeah. going on the support actually is usually the ideal situation because the ba the the main counterplay to enchanters is the fact that they're so squishy, and that's yeah. what makes champions like Yumi and Seraphine so goddamn broken is yeah. because you can't you can't hit can't them. get them. Yeah. Sona like Sona's not very long range and she's super squishy. Janna she can push you off of her once or once maybe twice. But she's super squishy, mm -hmm. right? That that's all the traditional enchanters are, and that's why that's what makes Seraphine and Yumi so broken, is because you can't just one shot them first. Because especially because yeah. eighty carries don't really have a lot of life steal anymore. Like mm -hmm. it's very rare that you can actually build Bloodthirster, and I mean Bloodline's not very good. It's like eight percent life steal, which you need a lot of time. I mean, unless obviously if you're playing Zeri, you have Shield Bow, sure. Yeah, but... that's yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah, Shield Bow. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah. So I think kill kill the enchanter if you can. There Always you ban Yumi unless you can take Yumi. 
uh, always take Seraph. Oh my God, there's so many must bans. I really there's feel so like many. You should, never, you should really never give. Yeah. It, I mean, it's impossible to not give them all, right? But I, I feel I like you think, should never give Yumi and Seraph. I still think we should. You should just be counterpicking Yumi with Sona, but. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair too. But you just mentioned, right? It's so easy to kill the Sona versus killing the Yumi. Yeah. So I, I mm -hmm. think that's why a lot of teams maybe are not interested. Because what does Sona do against a Vi? <laughs> yeah. You get one Sona shot. can build Hourglass. That's true. That's that true. takes a little bit. You still get dumpstered in lane at level six. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think it's tough. I, I also think that we should be seeing more Hourglasses. Uh, I think actually Luger builds Hourglass last item in like game. Yeah, builds it on three. Zeri. Yeah, and I was like, that's pretty dang good. I think more teams should be doing that because um, the item is just not balanced. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love seeing like three or four, three or four Zanya stopwatches <laughs> go off at the same yeah, time in the team fight. fight. It's, yeah, it's really funny. <laughs> uh, so, uh, did you guys uh, have anything else on the meta before we talk about some all pro? I want to talk about all pro because. Uh, you know, what What'd you guys think? I guess uh, it was pretty much EG first team, except for someday at the top lane, because <laughs> Impact yep. likes to phone it in regular season. Uh, yep. They were probably like, come on, Impact, let's all go for all pro first team. He's like, no. Nah. I don't think they care, if you want to be they, completely they honest. Care. But nah. um, yeah, I think it's kind of what I expected, to be honest. I can't yeah. really think of anything major I would change. Yeah, I, I, I saw like the top you know, three for each. And uh, I was pretty much on board with all of them. Did you guys have anything that like you didn't really agree with or any standouts that you thought or people that may have missed out? Maybe Palafox yeah. over to yeah. That That I, would be uh, like the only thing. I could see that. Sure. I would have, uh, I would have even considered putting in Abadage. He actually had a really, really solid like last half of the split. I mean, his first half was pretty rough, but I think that's what took him out because he was so bad yeah, the first half. Yeah, so bad the first. Right? That, it's the, it's well, it was like the split. first. It was the first two weeks that were actually bad, um, and the rest of it was actually fine. I mean, this was being repeated on all the podcasts. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of Abadage copium in a lot of podcasts. Um, I, I think he could have seen a third, a third, uh, third All Pro team. Same with Palafox. I do actually think Impact. I mean, yeah, he's on the best team, so it's like hard not to vote for him a little bit. I don't think he actually deserved All Pro at all. He was actually so terrible in the regular season. Mm. I mean, I'm an impact. I love impact. Um, I al I always think that he's great because he always shows up in playoffs specifically. But the dude was like hard trolling so many games on EG, like just dying to all the ganks, getting caught out randomly, just <laughs> every top doing so was, much, though. doing so much weird random stuff. So I mean, impact I think got a little bit of name bias. I mean, I don't really mind. I don't care. It's impact, right? But yeah. if I'm being really picky, I would have not even put him on all pro. Um, but I, I, mean, I don't think my, there's my, another my... person to put there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should have been third. Else you put there, I think Philip, Whippo maybe? was second, and I think that Impact was third. But there was no one else. Fudge was not good. Philip wasn't good enough. So who do you put? Right? There's literally no one. Yeah, there's no one. Dokla, I mean, Dokla, Van Dokes. Mm. Uh, the problem like, is yeah. Dokes' low games were even like on Impact's level, and he have. Because he's on a worse team, like it was hard for him to always show up. Like they were basically yeah. just like playing with their hearts on their sleeves and just like bashing their heads in. So like he had a lot of bad games and a lot of really good games. Mm. Mm. I I think it's like kind of the same for me. I don't know. I I just I think Dokla was like the Dokla's same as Impact. Probably so the closest. Different. I will give you that. Yeah, I mean. I, I, I actually think it packed out a terrible regular season, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think FBI should have been third. I, I think Luger was pretty important for his team's wins, but like that's literally just because he needs to carry more, right? The team needs an AD carry to do more. I think that yeah. 100 Thieves was not winning off the back of FBI. Um, so yeah, I think that was weird, but it's not that big of a deal. And then who he's also, I still don't think he had, a good, had an amazing split. But I, don't know, I think Afro would have been better there. So those are my two. Um, I, I can agree with that. Yeah, Afro. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, do you want to move on to the? Egregious. Yeah, nothing crazy. Yeah. There's no robberies yeah. or anything. No. Do we want to move on to the coaching staff and rookie of the year that was also announced with that? Yeah. Yes. I mean, everyone knows who the rookie is. What doesn't surprise anyone? The Whoa. rookie was Philip. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie. So for any, if, if you haven't seen it. Team of the year or coaching staff of the year was CLG. 
which is like one of the few times this is actually a good pick for coaching staff of the year yeah. and it wasn't just like eg randomly uh and then rookie of the year was jojo pian yeah i will yeah. say i actually thought that well it is pretty obvious he's good like there were some other like like this is the one of the few years where we had good rookies like people say jojo pian's obvious but rookies. berserker qualifies guys yeah mm -hmm. berserker, he qualifies and so the fact we... that he didn't get it with how many hyper carry performance you have is actually impressive Takui is also a rookie yep. for a rookie like he, he was worse than jojo and like they were head to head in the same role so that makes it hard and then philip was like there are some years that someone of the caliber of philip does get rookie of the year by the way so this was totally a great. great split for rookies like we've mm. yep. been complaining like i think back in 2020 we were really sad about how few rookies like we had one rookie worth mm -hmm. even talking about Maybe literally one rookie in the league. So we're doing real good in terms of new people coming to the league. And some of them are actually NA too. Actually, three out of five of the rookies I can think of are NA. Philip, Kenby, and JoJo. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hard agree. This was a great year for rookies. I, I, I'm really happy about that. I do think that this was a tough, more tough award than people realize. And that JoJo, uh, he deserves it. But also, he got it a lot of a lot off of just being the best team on the best team too. Mm -hmm. um, this is true. I wouldn't even be surprised like if if C9 didn't have that berserker like boom or the if berserker didn't have the C9 boom, whatever. <laughs> uh, there, there, there's a real chance that berserker gets it as well. Um, if berserker was allowed to play in playoffs last split, maybe he would have gotten it. Yeah, yeah, that too. I think if berserker had not so much weird support shenanigans to swap it, he had like what three supports this year for, I don't know, like yeah. a crazy mm -hmm. amount. So, um, yeah, rough time for him, but I mean, who cares? Berserker's insane. He's going to have a job no matter what. <laughs> I mean, we, all, we yeah. already know who the most MVP of the split's going to be. So, I mean, we, I don't yeah. think we can talk about that. Absolutely. Either. Yeah, it's fake god. Yeah. Yep, fake god. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I do want to briefly mention one other topic. Uh, the Parth, formerly of TSM, was on Somni Insight, and he gave some really good insight. I think it was worth watching his segment of the show. Uh, I the one thing I want to point out was he talked about how at Worlds or just international turns in general, how for the last four or five plus years, like Korean teams, whenever they scrim like TSM or whatever, they would give hints to the other Korean teams in like the group with TSM, like, mm. hey, this is what they play, what they whatever, you know, what they draft, right? Yeah, yeah, really sketchy stuff. Not and cool, also LPL man. teams, right? <laughs> like infamously or notoriously or famously, which however you want to say it, LPL teams like banded together to like <laughs> like all the minds came together to help like rng or edg or whatever team was left in the tournament fpx like figure out how to beat korea mm -hmm. so like this is all cool and it's kind of known to some extent but the weird part that parth mentioned was western teams are the opposite they will be like i want to be the number one ranking na team i want to be the guy who got into quarterfinals against three owed i'm not going to share crap with my my, my other na teams i want to be the best na team and i'm just thinking and also the same for eu but like I'm thinking to myself, why don't we work together a little bit? We're not the like favorites yeah. by far, right? We're not like SKT saying like I don't want to give hints to Don Juan, right? We're, we're like TL 100 Thieves, C9. Like, why aren't we working together so we can be respectable? Like, sure, in the short term, if C9 does better than 100, uh, 100 Thieves or whatever, it's bad for like relative branding or whatever. But if NA isn't competitive long term, like some people will tune out, right? More and more. So. Yeah. Just wanted to leave that on the table. It's really strange. Not surprising, but it's really strange. Yeah, I think... Uh, I yeah. I mean, I just think that it's... It kind of really shows a difference into, like, the mentality, uh, like, towards the com the competition in the game. Like, totally different East and West. And uh, I think... I really wish that we would change things because if we, if we want to have a shot at these international tournaments, which, you know, as fans for, of NA, that's like... You know, the hopium is every year like we have passionate fans, but I just feel like sometimes the orgs fail us in a sense of like not doing everything we can to like make a, a respectable showing, you know, for NA. Yeah. And it's always been kind of a joke. And that's unfortunate. So I, I just hard agree with, you know, like that's why those regions do well. Like there's a pride in it like to a if I can't personally win. I want my region to, you know, carry on and move forward. And yeah. I don't know. It'd just be nice if we adopted some of that thinking. <laughs> it's this kind of stuff. This is like mechanics, like comps, like play patterns and like just how good our players are, are not even close to the reason why NA is bad compared to this stuff. 
this stuff is the reason why Western teams never win. Like this stuff is so much more meaningful. Mm-hmm. Like sharing scrim results, sharing practice strategies, sharing insights with other teams. Like this stuff is infinitely more valuable than like us signing a slightly better player or us like having a slight like a couple more champions in draft for some random reason, right? Like this stuff is actually like the reason why we would win or lose international events. So it's actually very disappointing to hear. Yeah, um, it is. I'm not even surprised, right? Like that we do this stuff. It just feels so NA, so American, so Western. If EU does it too, I'm not even surprised with that either. And it's just, it's just so petty. It's so mm. petty and funny. We're scraping the bottom of the barrel, and we want to be the best <laughs> trash, <Yeah. laughs> the shiniest, <laughs> nicest looking piece of trash. Yeah. So I think it's really stupid. Like this scrim meta stuff too that we hear, where uh, we talk, we talk about sometimes where it's like teams play to win scrims teams don't play to practice stuff or it makes do no stuff sense. well they want to play the 30th lucian nami bot lane into Sivir karma or some shit like <laughs> this is why we're bad like this stuff if it doesn't change it, it we're always going to be bad because it doesn't matter what kind of players we, we bring over here if they are adopted into that same meta they're gonna stay they're gonna be bad like yeah. that's you can throw american players who were born in Nene Solo queue into that Asian environment where they have a totally different idea of how to play scrims and how to communicate with their teams, they will do better than they will do just by living and playing in North America. And yeah, that's, 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 those are the, some of the real problems that I think that, you know, we don't talk like champs queue, blah, 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 all this stuff. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, we didn't do very well at MSI <laughs> again. So none of yeah. that stuff matters nearly as much as this type of practice mentality. Um, it's like, it's just come on, like, NA. Ultimate. Yeah, get it together. That's the ultimate like way to to win. That's that's why a- Asian teams have been on the top for so so long. Yeah, um, they they just have no qualms about doing whatever it takes to be the best. Good on them, man. Uh, well, is there is there any last things that you guys wanted to talk about? We're at about an hour and a half, but uh, is there any last things y'all wanted to say? No. Oh, uh, dude, okay. this playoff bracket is so weird. Why did TSM and Golden Guardians get a week break? It seems super lame, but I'm whatever. I'm telling you. Yeah, that format is uh, like a little janky. I, I like I'll the play-in the... idea. But... Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll throw yeah. in that some of the ways that like Dom1 or KT were playing Velvet and LCK could have fit right at home here in NA. Like I was like, oh, shit. They're playing exactly <laughs> like us. That was, that was a terrible play. That was a that terrible was, pick. Yeah. That was like, there's just like some absolute bottom of the barrel play and i love it i love how entertaining those matches have been i think na playoffs have been really great so far well yeah at least last week's were really great yeah I, I, lower bracket games i'm not as excited for but we'll see they could surprise right. me i don't well, think should anybody's be... excited for them right like does anybody they care know. about if they start winning cares. everyone will start bad. coming out of the woodwork dude they'll be like tsm's winning what yeah why are imagine they tsm thing? versus clg lower bracket Ooh, I mean, I'm, I'm down. That would be hype. That would be pretty hype. Because so. I'm, like, uh, I'm really <laughs> disappointed in FlyQuest. So if they lose a TSM yeah. and TSM actually looks good, I wouldn't even be that sad, honestly. But yeah, I'm, I'm so. so hyped for the uh, upper bracket. Oh my god, it's gonna be so good. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be so so good. I just want to see EG freaking uh destroy C9. No offense, guys, <laughs> but any C9 <laughs> C9 fans. But I just want to see some serious like. Mitchell went in on C9 today, and he also we went did, in man. on FlyQuest, man. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, Mitchell's going to get an play, angry man. DM from Kimmer. Yeah, oh, oh that's right. Oh, I forgot Ooh, he's a C9. <laughs> Kimmer. Yeah. Hey, they can still make worlds, man. They can still make They can still make 3rd C. They can steal a spot from, from somebody. I don't know. Yeah. TL. No offense. Yeah. Well, well, DM from the league dad, Kevin. All right. Well, we'll see uh, a lot of good action. At least there's more league to watch, I guess, coming up. So that's a good thing. Uh, but that's going to do it for us. I want to thank my co-host once again, the gang, the squad, <laughs> the goods, whatever this name is going to be. <laughs> Kevin Mitchell, Alistair, thank you for being here <laughs> uh, as always. But enjoy your climb on the rift, guys. Try not to be too toxic. And we'll see you all on the next episode. Peace. Peace.